I've wanted to use a television as my monitor for my computer for a long time. When HDMI became the new standard, I remember plugging my computer into it thinking, I'm going to have this monstrosity of a screen and it's going to be fantastic because I can go HDMI out, no more of this VGA or DVI nonsense, and the experience was less than desirable. Now, on a Mac, uh, that's the primary device that I use, but I also use a Windows PC as well. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences in using that device, uh, using this 48 inch LG C1 display that is uh, sitting right behind me or standing behind me. It's quite large. Um, I've seen other people make videos on uh, this display as well as I believe the previous model was the CX, the 48 inch CX from LG. Now this being a high resolution HDR device, uh, 48 inch, just a fantastic screen that works really well. Um, utilizing that as a computer monitor sounds really cool. I mean, uh, I've I've tried all sorts of different displays for my computer and have always ended up back at kind of a standard display. Of course, right now I'm using an, an Asus ProArt display, which is fantastic for the photo editing and video editing that I do. But I, I always want more screen real estate so that I can have more going on. When I'm editing photos and videos, I have more that I can see. And so the idea of using a big display like a TV has been an attractive one to me. But there are still some, I mean, there are some pros, but there are still some heavy cons to consider. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. I've seen a lot of people talking about using a, a display like this as their PC monitor, but I haven't seen it, really anybody talk about utilizing it as a Mac display. And so I've, I've ran through it all and I've, I'm here to report to you uh, some of the pros and cons. So let's start out by talking about the things that are fantastic. Of course, this display, supports up to 120 hertz refresh rate. So when connected to the PC, um, I utilizing the 1080 Ti graphics card, which is a little old, but still a fantastic graphics card for me in the PC that I built, which also has a Threadripper uh, uh, processor, 128 gigs of RAM. It's a, it's a pretty powerful PC, although getting a little dated, but it's still a pretty powerful PC and it's a pleasure using it with this uh, display. So with this display, I'm able to get 120 hertz refresh rate. When I first plugged it in, it was a little jittery and I realized that I was only getting 60 hertz. And so 60 hertz is all that was uh, showing up on the display. And really it's because that's what the computer had by default set it to was 60 hertz. When I went into the display settings, uh, actually I had to go into the settings of the graphics card, so the NVIDIA uh, uh, control panel, and change the settings to 120 hertz, that's when things felt really good and I felt like I was using a display, uh, like a traditional display monitor for my computer. So everything was nice and moved and very fluid and I did not feel like I was on a TV. Now, while on a PC, a Windows PC, looking at text and stuff like that, I did feel like the text just wasn't as sharp. Uh, the pixel density of this television is not nearly as dense as a display that you would buy for a computer. The pixel uh, density is just much greater. And so the finer details are uh, much more present when you're that close. TVs like this aren't designed for you to be up close in front of. And so they don't need to be as pixel dense because of that. And so I noticed little things, but when it came to editing photos in Adobe Lightroom, when it came to looking at uh, Premiere Pro projects, video projects that I was uh, working on, it was a great experience. And so I really liked using this with my Windows PC, especially once I figured out the 120 hertz refresh. The jitteriness that I was experiencing was just unacceptable, dragging things around and it, it not moving uh, as fast as the mouse was moving. I just couldn't handle that. And so I, of course, wanted to use this display with my Mac as well. I have a M1 Mac Mini, and then I also have the brand new MacBook Pro 16-inch M1 Max. And so in connecting the M1 Max, uh, I tried it a couple of different ways. I went directly out HDMI, which I already knew was limited to 60 hertz because I remember uh, the announcements of the product. It was gonna be limited to 60 hertz, so I knew that 60 hertz out of the laptop is what I was going to get. 
And that just gave me that jittery feeling that I didn't like that I got originally when I had my Windows PC connected. So I thought, okay, well, I have a whole bunch of HDMI, uh, well, of USB-C uh, docks that have HDMI output because I just recently did a video on the best uh, HDMI output docks for the MacBook Pro. And so I'll link to that video below if you're considering getting a, a like a hub slash dock style device so that you can connect multiple displays and multiple other devices utilizing one cable. You could check out that video. But those devices are also limited to 60 hertz. And so a going output through HDMI over one of those docks, 60 hertz was providing a jittery existence and just was not, uh, it just was not a good experience. I could not make that my daily monitor with the, the jitteriness and, and of moving things around. I've got the display right behind me here, and uh, even though it's not <laughs> completely in focus, I'll show you a little bit of B-roll of moving it around, moving uh, windows and stuff around on the display. It's just jittery. It does not feel as fluid as using a traditional monitor. Now, even though a traditional monitor has 60 hertz refresh rate, like the monitor that I have connected to my MacBook Pro uh, M1 Max right now is only getting 60 hertz, and it feels fine because of that pixel density. That pixel density makes up for it, but the pixel density on the C1 being less, you can see the jitteriness much more and you really have to have 120 hertz in order for the C1 to be usable at all. And I experienced that when I connected it to my Windows PC as well. When it was at 60 hertz, it just was not usable. It didn't feel good. If I was watching a movie or something like that, it was just fine. Even if I was watching that from the, the computer, if I was watching a YouTube video, video, things looked fine, but when you're dragging windows around, when you're m maneuvering uh, with your mouse, it just it just feels laggy and it's just not a great experience. And so regardless of what I connected to my MacBook Pro, I was experiencing the same problems. Now that led me to search for alternate devices that I'd be able to use, such as this Cable Matters USB-C to HDMI dongle that's supposed to support up to 120 hertz. Now, even though it supports up to 120 hertz and I was able to verify that by plugging it into my Windows computer, I still could not get above 60 hertz out of the Mac. And it didn't matter whether I was on my MacBook Pro or on the Mac Mini M1. I think that there is no way to get more than 60 hertz out of a Mac unless you're using an Apple display like a, uh, a Pro uh, XDR display or something like that or the display that's built into your MacBook Pro. Of course, with the new displays on the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 supporting ProMotion, uh, it does ramp up and have higher refresh rates than 60 hertz. And so I know that it's capable of doing it, but it does not seem that it's capable to do that on a different different type of display. So any type of work that I would be doing, I'm going to have to do that on a traditional monitor that has uh, more pixel density so that 60 hertz is okay. And in all honesty, that's my guess is that it's pixel density that makes the difference. The reason that this display works okay on the PC at 120 hertz refresh rate is because the pixel density, uh, my guess is the pixel, that makes up for the pixel density. Whereas on the Mac, and even if I go down to 60 hertz on the Windows PC, I run into issues there and it just feels really laggy and it's unusable. So with that aside, we can kind of rule out using this C1 as a display on a Mac because we just simply can't get above 60 hertz refresh rate to compensate for the pixel density. And so because of that, it, it isn't going to be something that I'm gonna be able to use long term. But as a display for a Windows device, so my computer, my Windows computer, it was a really good experience. And if you use the tool called Fancy Tools, which can be installed uh, through the Microsoft website, it's called Microsoft Power Tools, and there's a link that unlocks these additional tools. You can actually separate your desktop up into grids that are predetermined sizes, and by holding down shift and dragging a window into a specific grid, it will snap into that size. Now, of course, by default, Windows allows you to drag a window to the edge, and it can go, uh, you know, 
know, quarter, half, full width, you know, you could do that. You can add in uh, software on the Mac to do the exact same thing. But the fancy zones tool allows you to create custom zone sizes. And so I was able to put my browser right in the middle. I can have my email app, my uh, Microsoft Teams and uh, Discord and all sorts of different apps perfectly set up so that it felt like a, a really nice dashboard really where I can get everything done without having to have multiple desktops that I'm switching between. And so that experience was really cool because really I'm focused on things in the middle, like whether I'm utilizing uh, my browser because I'm working on websites for a client. Most of the time I'm spending in web browsers doing my work. If I'm doing photo or video editing, I could set up an additional fancy zone uh, configuration that has more for um, photo view or video view. Or I, usually I actually probably would go full screen for something like that anyways. But the ability to customize that fancy zones and have it set up for max productivity for the way that I work is just great. And so on Windows, yes, you can use the LG C1 48 inch as a display. It's great because it has multiple uh, HDMI inputs that support 4K 120 hertz. And so if you have uh, different devices, Xbox, gaming device, PS3, uh, Nintendo Switch, all that stuff you can use along with your C1 display and then have your computer going into it. If you have multiple PCs, you've got multiple inputs there and you can switch between them. It's just a fantastic experience. Most displays have one, maybe two HDMI inputs and then the rest, if it has uh, other inputs, might be a USB-C like Thunderbolt type of input and then maybe some DisplayPort inputs. And so your inputs usually are pretty limited and so the C1 having additional inputs is pretty fantastic. There is some configuration that you're going to have to do with the display to keep it from doing things like you may have noticed that it kind of goes into this uh, it's not a sleep mode per se, but it is a decreased brightness mode. And that really is to protect from screen burn-in. When nothing is moving on the display and it's detected after a certain amount of time that nothing has moved, the display dims. So most of the time, this is not going to be a factor when you're using the display because majority of the time you are moving your mouse around at the very least, moving windows or different things around your display. And so the likelihood of it going into a sleep mode like it has been doing here uh, or a decreased uh, brightness mode are slim to none. But you can also go in and turn off a couple of things uh, such as its ability to go into a sleep mode um, because it seems to react differently to a computer to if I had just been watching a show or something. The movement that's going on, the TV knows that there's movement going on, that the input is changing, but it also seems to know when the input isn't changing too much. And so I've used this display for hours at a time and not had it go into sleep modes. But when I'm standing here talking in front of the camera and I'm not touching anything in the background and nothing is moving, it does go into a dimmed state. And then uh, if I had the auto power off, uh, because it will detect the fact that nothing has been going on for a while and it will go into a sleep mode as well. And then of course, once um, my Mac or my computer goes into a sleep mode. If there's no signal at all detected, then the display can go into a power off mode or like a full sleep mode where the screen is completely off um, until I go and power it back on manually with the remote. So it does come with a remote and the remote is interesting in and of itself. Moving the remote's uh, mouse around, or I guess it's a pointer, um, feels a little laggy as well. It has that same feel that I get when I'm moving the mouse around from my Mac. It's just not not as fast as I want to be moving and the remote kind of feels the same way but most remotes that have some sort of a pointer are that way they're not super uh, like high refresh they're not moving really fast um, because a lot of times with a with fast movement on the remote it may make you select the wrong thing because it moves too fast. But the remote is interesting. It's useful, but I also don't really like using it too much. Um, I'm not much of a, a remote person in the first place. Um, I did install the LG app on my phone and was kind of manipulating the TV a little bit, utilizing the app on the phone, which I found to be a better experience for me. So can you use this as your primary display? Well, yes, you absolutely can if you can connect 
connect it to a device that's going to have a high enough refresh rate. Uh, so a Windows PC is pretty much what you're going to be fixed to. I don't believe that you're going to be able to get any higher of a refresh rate out of a Mac. What I have not tried though is going out from a Mac to an external GPU which I have a lot of past experience with external GPUs and Macs, but I, am, I don't have one currently to test to see if I can go out from an external GPU into the TV and be able to get 120 hertz refresh rate. So perhaps somebody can chime in if you happen to know that in the comment section below, but something tells me that I'm still going to run into that type of problem because I think that Apple is just throttling the refresh rate uh, out of the Mac and making it only possible to get 60 hertz, which is really unfortunate um, because connecting external displays, even if they can support up to 120 hertz, which I have other displays, gaming displays that support 120, 144 uh, refresh rate, I'm not able to get that out of the Mac, which is unfortunate, which means if I want good refresh rate, even for gaming out of a Mac, I'm gonna have to use the display that my laptop has natively. I'm not going to be able to get high refresh rate out of attached monitors. And so that's probably why that limitation out of the HDMI port on the new MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch M1s, uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max have that limitation of 60 Hertz. Highly unfortunate but it is what it is. It's the way that Apple designed it. And if you try to go out over USB-C, Thunderbolt type devices, like I talked about already, that 60 hertz limitation still seems to be there as well. So I don't know for sure. I don't have any confirmation from Apple or anybody who knows any more than I do about whether or not that limitation is baked in or hardware limitation of some sort that the uh, these Macs have. I'm not really too sure, but I do know that ProMotion is a thing on the new Mac. MacBook Pros, and with that, there is the ability to go up to higher refresh rates. So I don't know. It could just be one of those Apple things where they give us a lot of cool things, but they don't give us everything. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope that that helped you in understanding a little bit more of the technical on whether or not one of these televisions could be used as a monitor for your computer. Um, a lot of people have talked about eye strain, different things like that. I haven't experienced any of that, and I wear glasses and tend to get eye strain if I stare at a display for too long. I didn't feel that this display, uh, this television, television display being up close to it like that put any more amount of a strain on my eyes than being in front of any other display that I've used over the last several years. So I'm really pleased with the quality of the LG C1 48 inch uh, television. I think as a TV, it's absolutely fantastic. If I was looking for a new TV, I would go with this same exact model, just bigger. Um, but as a monitor, I'm just not able to use it. And that's because I'm primarily a Mac user and I primarily use uh, an Apple computer. In the future, if I end up switching to Windows again, which I've done many times in the past, I may revisit this idea of utilizing the LG C1 as a display. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. I'd love to have a conversation, hear other people's opinions, uh, thoughts, tips, experience on the topic. Let's talk about it down there below. If you're thinking about picking one of these up or perhaps maybe one of the accessories I've talked about that I used in conjunction with this monitor, check out the links in the description below. Uh, and then again, if you're looking for a dock or some sort of a tool that allows you multiple HDMI outputs out of a Mac, I've got my video that I just put out on the topic of uh, reviewing the best docks and talking about the pros and cons, including read and write speeds of of attached uh, solid state drives and all sorts of stuff like that. So make sure to check out that video. But until next time, I hope you're having a great day. Give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.